Mm. It is an epidemic and, and there's a lot of rhetoric. You talk about we need to change, we need to treat this like a social disease. Put that in layman's terms, gentlemen. What do you mean by that? Well, the first thing is, this is nothing new. I first wrote about this in The Guardian 11 years ago, and at that point, and it was in August, 17 teenagers had lost their lives in London. It's 21 today, so there was a bit of a drop-off between 2009 and 2014, but essentially, politics has failed to get a grip of this issue. So, is, so you know, because that's interesting, because I think we feel it's getting worse and worse and worse, yeah. it's out of control. This has but been you're saying... It's actually not getting any worse. This has been happening in our country, under our noses, for years now. And we've failed to get a grip of it because we haven't made this a national mission and a national priority. Look, the job of politicians is not uh, like the police, like Leroy, to actually operationally deliver this stuff on the ground, but it's to tell a story about what this says about modern Britain, provide the leadership, implement the policy and then galvanise I, national and state actors to action. What do you mean by social disease? Because people will argue, Chucker uh, and Leroy, more police, tougher sanctions, arrest on site, whatever. Longer jail sentences. Absolutely. But that is, look, what, there are, what, what, is, what do you mean a social right, disease? The, per the perpetrators are not innocent victims in this, so nobody is excusing what is going on. I want to make that clear for your viewers, but unless we understand it, we can't do anything about it. Now, mm. So what do we mean when we talk about it being a disease and, op and adopting a kind of public health model to sort it out. This is a product of the environment in which these young people are yeah. growing up in. This doesn't just happen out of nowhere. Mm. We are, you know, there is a basic maxim uh, that you, you abide by, which is don't treat people in a way that you don't want to be treated yourselves. And that's what we expect of young people. But if society doesn't treat them properly, and we're bringing them up in an environment where they don't have enough opportunities, where they're often on estates where, which are incubators for a lot of this, and there is a huge number of social problems all in one place, and there and aren't avenues for them to go and, and we will you know, to earn money in a legitimate fashion. How then does that's that how work, though, Leroy? Because it, uh, how does that work, both of you? Because, you know, you can give benefit support to those people, you can... Is it about setting up more community centres? I mean, people who work have been said to do amazing jobs, but is that the solution? Well, the, I mean, it's, what it's, do we do? Just take those people up? Well, it's, and... a whole, it's a whole number of issues. A lot of the young people involved in this are excluded from schools and then we put them into these pupil, pupil referral units. We put all these really difficult so kids what do we in do one instead? place. Can I, well, so, you need so to we make... can't have our schools disrupted well, by you've youngsters got to either. Deal, deal with the school exclusion system. Make sure they actually have proper Leroy, access to sorry, opportunities, Can I just ask you this? I, I have a really strong view on this. Yep. Is this... You can talk about community centres, you can talk about money, you can talk about crime, you can talk about punishment. Is this not another symptomatic point about the breakdown of family in the United Kingdom? If you have no rules, no boundaries, no consequences if you break those boundaries, if your dad's doing whatever and your mother isn't interested, at 13 or 14 you're going to run the streets, you feel you belong, you get involved in the wrong things, teenage pregnancy rates go higher, crime, we're talking about... Isn't that what's happening in well, Great Britain? Th one of the key things is about adverse childhood experiences. Neglect, yeah. abuse, yeah. sexual... Um, just taking um, parental issues as critical. So if you don't recognise that, then you won't realise that so many young people are, are, are suffering from a psychological trauma, mm. not to mention physical mm. trauma. Mm. And as a result of that, you can start to see them just as a perpetrator mm. and not as a patient, because mental health is a massive issue. Huge. So once you recognise the adverse childhood ex experiences, we call them ACEs, and the implications of that. Then you start to see you can't just arrest your way out of this problem. It, you can't stop and search your way out of the problem. So what do you, you do instead? Right. Yeah. So it's, there's certain people you need to arrest and hopefully get them rehabilitated in the prison mm. service, even though there's a big question mark about that. Mm. But there's also those on the margins, the ones that are being groomed. Because you have to recognise safeguarding agencies are reducing. And the thugs on the street who are grooming these youngsters to do... Um, at really bizarre things. So, uh, one of the things is to tempt young people through food. Buy them food, they get in mm. debt, you have to run an errand, you're getting more debt, yeah. and, it's, and then you just go into this but, cycle. But is it not also, listening to both of you, that it's, it's a part of everything, Chucker, isn't it? It's not, it's not just... It's easy to go the politicians or certain people who go, we're, not, we're too soft on these people. It's the family, it's the law, it's a social conscience. It's You're a whole absolutely well, it's, right. It's, 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 it's everything, isn't it's, it? It's all of those things. And by the way, let's not forget, there are lots of young people doing this who come from very stable and mm. together I mean, non-chaotic. Um, dragged, dragged, and lots of people I mean, I think who, was, who don't have a father figure involved who are very managed to well, bring up part, their children very well. That's true. I mean, I, I think part of the problem also is 
how we are encouraging young people to think of themselves, to define themselves by what they have as, a to, as opposed to who they are. And this is one of the big uh. problems. Respect and dignity needs to be based on inherent self-worth, not status symbols, not all these things that you have. And that's a lot of what's wrong here, is that you've got young people who feel dispossessed, yeah. disenfranchised and have no power. By so society you've got to... and by home and it, it, a it's whole combination. Exactly yeah, but the streets that. Exactly give that. them a sense of identity. And that's the problem. Yeah. That's, that's the, the problem. So and then they the get problem. dragged you've got an down imbalance by a long that's it. people. And that's why that's anyone, yeah. whether you're from a sound background or a less fortunate background, can be subject to that. Mm. So in Scotland, they did this thing that, which sounds confusing, but maybe you can unravel it for us. They, they treated the problem like a disease. Yes. And they went and looked as, it, as if it was a public health issue what rather than a crime issue. How does that work? Because it right. has well, worked, what, what it means, hasn't it? it it's, a, it's an asset-based approach. Mm. So all of the agencies have to be very coordinated. They now have to look at the critical factors that are causing the violence. So in Glasgow, I went up there... Uh, as part of the Youth Violence Commission. And, and it's quite clear that their issues, a lot of them is sectarian, um, the, the knife is the weapon of choice, a lot of it's around the home, but there's also this issue around men and their self-worth and how it plays itself out. So it's not one size fits all, so you need to do proper analysis to identify the causes, not the cofactors like but music. But you've identified uh, the causes so brilliantly this morning. I guess what people would know is, what do you then? That you then do? coordinate. Well, you then well. coordinate in a way that it's not just silo type working, because that's what we have in in in. So England. your youth service is not properly talking to Absolutely. the police, who are not talking to the schools, and then the mental health provision. Everybody. It all has to Everybody. be. Um, that takes and by the way, money though, doesn't it? it, it and have no, it we doesn't. got? It's not, it's, it's not the only thing. It's a right. paradigm shift. This that's, really, that's really interesting to me. I mean, I know I said a bit about the family, but that you can't just say it's any one thing. And it can't just be about arresting. It can't be about providing a community centre on the corner of every street. It's got to be everybody working together and understanding, as you guys say, that there is an issue here. And, and why doesn't it take money? Why doesn't that take money? Well, it's not the only thing. I, th I don't yeah. think either okay. of us would say you don't need more funding, but it's not the only thing. And by the way, look, this is an issue for everybody. It's not just like mm. black kids killing black kids, as sometimes it's depicted. This affects everyone, every child, in many of our urban city centres has parents who are worried now, particularly sons, when they go out. And let's not forget, middle-class cocaine and drug use is helping to fuel the illegal drugs market, which is often underpinning well, this whole thing. Can repeat that, because I wanted to hear something say... Well, it's true. Middle-class cocaine and drug use is helping to underpin this. Mm. And then you've got young children and young people from my area, drug-running and trafficking... Would legalising it help? ..across other... I don't and, think so, and no. And they across other yeah, parts the of our country. The type of policing that they experience. So the middle class have a totally different type of policing from the urban deprived areas. And that's one of the things that brings this lack of trust in police. And if, they, if people don't feel secure mm -hmm. and police can't give them that security, then that's when they go into the street justice G system. Gentlemen, we could talk about this all morning. Fascinating. The passion that you both feel really important. And I think, as you said, everybody has to pull together and acknowledge there is a problem.